today I'm going to make a natural edge bowl out of this bit of walnut I've had uh, knocking around for quite a while. I've super glued up the edges uh, because I want to keep the bark on. So I've got to chuck it up, uh, turn the tenon on this side and then um, hog it out to keep the surface of the bark intact. All being well, it might fly off, you never know. I was going to just uh, grip the piece with the step drive in the uh, chuck, but it, the wood was not feeling that it was solid enough. So I took it away and used a spade drill to actually make um, a hole through the bark so that I could then fit it on to the step drive. But then I discovered, of course, that uh, having it in the chuck meant that there wasn't enough length so I've had to take it off and fit the drive uh, straight into the uh, headstock and I could then fit the wood nicely and securely on the um, drive. Uh, with a centre here and ready to actually turn the back end of it. Uh, I'll give it a quick spin up so that's on the fire line just in case, make sure it's all locked down. So it seems to all be nice and tight. That's not bad. So, make sure this is tight. So half inch bowl gouge and uh, trim it up from the um, back to start with. Ah, that's why it's bouncing around. Got to be careful of the bark. So when I come in, when I get to the edge, I think I need to be cutting in, not doing a pull cut, but doing a push cut. Because this is uh, going to be quite a flat bowl, I want it to be quite stable. I'm using some very big record power jaws that grip on a dovetail at about 110 mil. So I'm just going to mark that on here, which I'm pretty darn close to where that is now. point I'm beginning to get a little bit concerned that the bark is standing a bit hollow so I uh, stopped and poured some more super glue in um, which uh, I at this stage hope would be good enough but let's just wait and see so just did a bit of refining of the profile of the dovetail with uh, a skew uh, it's a dovetail not a sea gripper and then uh, it seemed like a good idea at this point to dress the uh, bottom of the uh, tenon as much as I possibly could uh, because if possible I'd try and avoid rechucking it to do any major work on the bottom uh, if I can get a decent finish at this stage um, with a good diameter for the tenon so that it matches the jaws accurately there's a reasonable chance you don't have to rechuck it or at least only rechuck it for a small amount of work. So a bit of care now, whilst it's easy to do, uh, leaving a small nub in the centre, of course, which you can't get to, which you've got to sand off or take off with a chisel. Right, now time for some more reprofiling around the edge where the bark is a bit dodgy. So I'm taking it as carefully as I can do um, and trying to profile it so that I've got a, a nice shallow dish.
Now it's at this point that I probably should have stopped and added some more glue to the bark. But it seemed okay, so I just carried on. Uh, watch in a few seconds though, because it does get quite exciting. Well, the bark just came off. That was exciting. Didn't hit me because I was standing to the side. Don't know what it did it. <laughs> oh yeah, that just goes to show up. That was on the camera. Well, let's have a look. Right, well I've just changed the trousers and um, this is uh, this is what's happened to the walnut um, and I can see that the glue only reached in a small bit despite me pouring in a lot of it um, and I've got uh, several bits of bark that I've managed to rescue Let's just push that down I've got to decide whether I'm going to try and glue it back up again. Now I can get access to the underside. Uh, because I'd like to still get this to work if I can. Because it's a nice characterful piece of bark you don't get very often. Uh, so I think, I think I'm going to give it a go. Look at that go. In there. Oh yeah. The other side of it. I think I'm going to try and pry it off and then I'm going to try and glue it. Right, I'm going to go and try and pry it all off now. I think the other layers will actually potentially come off so it's a shame but I just don't think it's worth the effort so I think the bar is in the bin I'll finish the turning god knows what it's going to look like but at least I've got the bark to worry about now I'll just finish shaping the outside into something and then I'll hollow it out into well it'll be natural edged but without the bark so I'm going to put it back in the uh, step drive and center it up again. I'm using a, a Crown Cryo 3 8 bowl gouge which is double ended uh, in the handle. So this uh, point I used the freshly sharpened tip of the traditional uh, grind bowl gouge just to get some uh, better smooth the cuts and then I did sharpen the sweat back grinder and then went back to using that which is still my preferred one uh, uh, for most cuts. So time to try and get rid of the final tool marks with the uh, scrapers, it's a negative rake straight grind uh, scraper. Still a little bit of pluck grain at the edges of the wings, uh, which I uh, tried to get a cleaner cut with a push cut with a freshly sharpened spindle gouge. Helped a bit, uh, still a bit of plucking that needed sanding. Uh, there was also a little bit of plucking down near the tenon, uh, which I also dressed with a spindle gouge, but I didn't film. And then on with the sanding, uh, both by hand and using the uh, electric drill with a sanding arbor on it uh, through the grades uh, stopping the lathe uh, to do some of the sanding by hand where the wings are in particular as you don't get an effective sand with the lathe actually going. Then time for the cellulose sanding sealer uh, plenty of it because the wood's very dry so this is the pre-thin version I think from Hampshire Sheen as you can see it's just soaking in like blotting paper I had to do several coats of this 
Um, the danger of doing several coats is that it starts to streak as the uh, top layer isn't absorbed fully in. Um, but with wood this dry, you need to get it into the grain, otherwise you won't get a decent finish. The alternative, of course, is to use oils, which is probably what I should do as it's a walnut bowl. But my normal finish is, is this. It's a cellular sanding cedar and then a, a wax. I want to embellish the, the bottom uh, quite a lot, I think, in this case. Uh, so I want to do some little beads and textures. Uh, so I thought I'd try and do that now whilst the going was good. So I didn't have to uh, do it under a rechucking system. Um, so I'm just turning a, a few little beads after I'd uh, made some initial cuts with a point tool. I'm using a quarter inch spindle gouge just to rather inexpertly but somewhat effectively roll uh, a couple of, of little beads. So the beads came out quite crisp, so I thought I'd then get out the Crown Mini Spiralling and Texturing Tool, which is my preferred uh, texturing tool, I must admit, and uh, put a few textures in, in this case aiming about 45 degrees to the left uh, to get a couple of nice little spiral marks in the same direction, and then I thought I'd turn it a about 45 degrees the other way on the same edge and then you get uh, a more gentle spiral in this case and in the opposite direction. Didn't quite get that spot on I must admit so I tried to just do it again let, letting the existing spiral pick up the cut on the tool. Uh, so yeah that wasn't too bad. Could have done with a firmer grip the first time. Just use my uh, sharp point tool to make some uh, detailed lines around the texturing just to finish them off. So with the spiralling done, time to put it into the chuck and get on with hollowing out the centre. 800, 900 revs, just getting a bit of vibration, so... So I'm not sure exactly how much of uh, the centre I'm going to take out, um, but I want to make sure I don't go through the bottom. So quick uh, idea of what the depth is with my homemade uh, simple depth gauge. Uh, and then basically just more of the same until the inside shape feels about the right width and proportion for it. And you have to remember to 
approach the start of the cut near the rim with the bevel uh, riding. So you have to move the handle right across to the right hand side. This is quite a shallow platter so that you don't have to be too extreme with the movement. It's particularly with that uh, bark being natural edged, you've got to make sure that the tool cuts in neatly at the start, otherwise you'll get a catch. The natural edge cut can be a little bit disconcerting to start with because you're cutting fresh air at the beginning of the cut, which is why I was emphasising the point about bevel presentation. It's really important to get that smooth cut, particularly if half of it is air and half of it is bowl. So steady does it, tool handle right the way across to the right, sweep round gently and bring the tool handle round, right in the bevel, making adjustments if you need to to make sure the bevel is always in contact as you go all the way around. So now it's just a question of making sure we get a nice flat bottom uh, using some scrapers uh, which are nice and sharp, negative rake, just to try and make sure that bottom is as smooth and as flat as possible. And then onto the sanding at this stage, again using the electric drill, uh, sometimes turning it on, just as that is the most effective way of sanding the biggest area, uh, but sometimes stopping it and hand sanding with the electric drill on those wings uh, where the sander does tend to bounce off if you're not careful. Also using some of the finer grits, uh, just sanding that natural edge, uh, also done by hand um, because it's quite difficult to get a decent finish without. And then time for the finishes, again I'm sticking to the chestnut sanding sealer pre-thin, or it might be the Hampshire Sheen one, I'm not sure. It's soaking up like blotting paper, so uh, I think I'm probably going to have a few streaks, which I did, um, because of the layers that I needed to put on. This probably would have been better oiled, but the net result was fine after a bit of work. Because the natural edge was absorbing it even more, I uh, used the brush to get really into those uh, porous areas. The sanding sealer was left to dry and then that was cut back with Yorkshire grit, uh, which I forgot to film, um, but then that was followed by a couple of coats of Hampshire sheen wax, um, put on by hand and then buffed off with the lathe spinning. So far. Okay, so this is my standard um, reversing jam chuck jaws. Um, no, jam chuck. Uh, it fits on standard uh, C jaws for the record power chucks outward mode. Um, it's been sort of profiled uh, out of a wood turning magazine. I think somebody show the idea of a profile which meant that you could actually jam chuck in here or all the way around the end uh, and this is um, wetsuit material of a, from a very old wetsuit my son had when he was about 10 years old obviously he can't get into it now because he's 32 of a regular paper towel in the middle just to act as another slip coat just in case it slips then It'll just be paper. So I just wanted to address 
<clears throat> some of the base up towards the tenon where there was a little bit of plucking that I'd not dealt with properly the first time round. So I'm just dressing that with the spindle gouge and also reprofiling the outside of the um, foot because I want to make that into a little bead. And then I'll just finish off the profile of the bead using my quarter inch detail spindle gouge just to roll the edge and make it a bit neater. I've got a little bead now on the outside matching the beads that I did earlier on. Reasonably well. I don't think there's any flaws around the bottom. I think so. So I'm just going to use the uh, quarter inch spindle gouge now and just go in and dress as much of that residual nub off as I can. Uh, the last bits will be sanded off off the lathe. So I'm now going to use the buffing wheel system uh, to uh, give it all a decent shine, but I'm going to take the centre of the bowl right the way back uh, to uh, the Tripoli brown finish, which I wouldn't do normally if I'd sanded it, but there are some streaks in the uh, sanding sealer as a result of me applying several layers. So what I do in that circumstance sometimes is put Yorkshire grit actually all over the bowl, which I've done in this case, and then buff it with a bit of Tripoli on the wheel and Yorkshire grit. And that just gives it a slightly um, better abrasive effect. And then finish with the aluminium oxide and then finally the Canuba to give it a really nice fat shine. And that all really worked out rather well. So there we have it with a really nice deep fat shine and almost no visible streaks in the sanding sealer. So that was a success out of a piece that was almost going in the bin. And I think the detailing at the bottom for having a nice wide foot uh, takes advantage of that space and uh, gives it some additional impact.